So this is me unboxing a Siglent oscilloscope. Ooh. And this is actual footage of me putting it back Ooh. in the box. Hey everybody, I am here with the Hantech 2D72 70 megahertz scope. 25 megahertz function generator and digital multimeter. So the question is, after spending months researching what I thought would be my dream scope, why did I send it back? Well, to quote Marie Kondo, it just didn't spark joy. I was fine spending $500 on a scope if I thought it would really help me in life, but when it comes down to it, I'm a tinkerer. I'm just a guy in his garage who likes playing with electronics and making YouTube videos. I'm not an electronics engineer and spending $500 on a dedicated scope just didn't make sense to me. So when Banggood offered to send me this thing out for free in exchange for an unbiased review, I thought, heck yeah, I'd love to try it. But when it comes down to it, I don't want to do the same review that everybody else does. If you search any of these Hantech 2000 series scope meters on YouTube, you will find tons of reviews. And there are lots of people telling you that this is a very accurate scope. It's a very accurate meter. It's a very nice device. But I want to answer some questions that people don't answer. And the number one question that matters to me is who is the scope for? We know it's accurate. We know it's portable. We know the display is fine. We know you have to push a lot of buttons to make some things happen, but who is this scope designed for? And I have three people that I believe that this scope is designed for. It is designed for tinkerers. It is designed for teachers and it is designed for technicians. Let me explain. Now, I am clearly man enough to admit that the 200 megahertz four channel scope was way too much scope for my needs. But I'm also self-aware enough to know that the 200 kilohertz DSO 138 is nowhere near enough. And so looking for something in the middle, this provides an interesting option. If you want any of the lower end standalone scopes, you're going to pay in the $150 to $200 range for them. And so that's right where this thing is. And in addition to the scope, you get the meter and you get the waveform generator. And so there's some interesting propositions here. Now for me as a maker, I love the fact that this thing is battery operated and portable. And most importantly, I love that it's not made to just be kept on my desk. My desk space is a premium. I've got a big old bench power supply over here. And to be honest, it's in the way. I'm always pushing things out of the way over there. And so having this thing portable, having it in this nice little case that I can throw in a tub somewhere and get it out the once a month that I need it is pretty powerful. Now, in general, when you look at buying some kind of multi-purpose tool, you would say that you're better off buying three individual tools as opposed to a three-in-one tool. But I think there may be some reasons why that's not true for this particular device. Now, there's nothing wrong with buying a standalone scope, and I think everybody should have a standalone meter. But there are some reasons why this thing is beneficial. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time dwelling on the features for makers and tinkers because I think they're going to become obvious when I start talking about teachers and technicians. Now, as somebody who's taught electronics in a classroom setting, I can tell you that asking the entire class to gather around the scope is not a good idea. And trying to put any kind of video camera on these things, you can see that I'm getting all kinds of reflections of my ceiling, and it's just not a good experience for anybody looking at what's going on in the scope. But for teachers, this thing is powerful, and let me explain why. So this meter comes with a USB cable. And although it looks like a standard USB-C cable, because it is, this cable is really what unlocks the magic of this device for teachers and tinkers. Now the real magic happens when you plug this USB cable in and hook this thing up to your computer. Once you run their software, not only can you see what this screen is displaying, but you can control it. And not only can you control it, there are advanced features that you can get to from the software that you'd never be able to do on the device itself. 
And beyond that, you can even log all of the data that this thing is receiving. And so what's really cool is instead of asking all the students to gather around the oscilloscope, instead of trying to record all the reflective screens for YouTube, you can view and record all of the stuff on your computer, which makes it way easier to present and way easier to share. What's also really cool is that while there's limitations for only being able to display one thing on a screen here, you can have the oscilloscope on this screen and the function generator on your computer at the same time because all of the features in this meter continue to work even if you can't see them on the live screen. So I'm using the built-in signal generator on the scope itself to put a sine wave into the oscilloscope. And as you can see over here, I've got my little sine wave. I'm set for one kilohertz with an amplitude of two volts. We're going to go ahead and put that back to scope and I'm going to go over to the computer. So I'm over here at the software and this is one of my favorite things. It's not the fastest, most responsive software, but I do love that you can have the thing on a big 27 inch monitor. Uh, right now I'm using channel one as the input and I have channel two set up for my waveform generator. You can see that although it looks really smooth here, there's a, you know, a little, little jitter over here on this side. Uh, but it is working. I can come in here and change all the different parameters of my wave. And then I will see that reflected over on the scope itself, which is really nice. They're both operating at the same time. Uh, as I said, this thing has a ton of features features that you can't get on the scope itself. You can export this data, you can play it back, you can do different capture intervals, uh, change your triggering, which you can obviously do on the scope. But there's a lot of other neat things like some math operators. For instance, I could come in here and I can say that I want to see what it would look like uh, with an A plus B uh, math operator on the waves between channel one and two. I can do A times B. I can even save this data and look at all the different parameters. Again, uh, if you are teaching or if you are trying to record this stuff to demonstrate what's going on on YouTube or something like that, this is fantastic. From a maker's perspective, I really do like the logging features. And I think the best way to demonstrate that is to go over to the multimeter. So I think here's a nice little demonstration of this feature. Uh, let's say that I'm doing one of these battery rundown tests. I want to know not only how long will this battery run before it gets to a certain voltage, maybe I want to see the curve, maybe I want to see how fast the actual voltage drops and things like that. Well, I can hook it up to this meter and go ahead and start my test. And you can see over here on the computer that these voltages are being logged and I can watch the voltage drop over time and I can export this data out and do whatever I want with it. So I think that's a very cool feature for makers. The other group of people that I think should really consider this are people who are technicians. Now, this is obviously not a Mac or Snap-on, but it is a nice, chunky, solid device. It comes with this impact-resistant carry case, as I said, and you can um, use this thing in the field. I'm in the middle of a project where we are cutting the roof off a bus and doing a roof raise and that involves cutting giant chunks of the wiring harness out and uh, trying to diagnose some sensors and some things that are broken on the bus. Having something like this that you can stick it under the hood of the vehicle, it's battery operated, you can get the cords out of the way, is just a fantastic thing. Uh, if anybody has any needs to measure sensors and things like that in the field, this thing is pretty hard to beat. It also does use two 18650 batteries which are swappable they say that you can get a couple of days out of this thing running full time but um you know it's good to have the option to swap batteries and charge them externally so that is my take on the hamtech 2000 d272 it is about 185 dollars currently on banggood and i think it is a serious contender for tinkers teachers, and technicians. Hey, love to hear if you guys own this thing, what you think. Uh, comment below and thanks for watching. Have a great day.